Vaughn and I grew up on opposite ends of the world, um, but we were both embedded in this water culture. And I think that although Vaughn grew up in South Africa and I grew up here in Southern California, we had similar upbringings because we both grew up around the ocean. It's a dangerous but incredibly beautiful place to, to grow up, to, to grow as a person, and to recreate. You know, I have the same stoke as I did when I was five years old, four years old, going fishing. And uh, I think it's more so, the other thing I've found out as I've got older is that adventure, yeah, it takes you to awesome places. Catalina Island sits 20 miles off one of the largest cities in the world. I had an old beat up boat. I used to come over here 25 years ago. And that's when I discovered Catalina as being just a gem. It's an oasis by itself, unique fishing, uh, just fantastic scenery. And we're fortunate enough to have it, and it's right in our backyard. Um, it's like a little sanctuary out in the middle of the ocean. And it's really special to fly fish around there because most people don't understand um, the variety of species of fish that live around the island and that it's there. I mean, the fishery is open 365 days of the year and it's, it's an incredible place to fish. I mean, you don't see a lot of guys out there, hardly any, fly England. I've been stand-up paddleboarding for the last 10, 12 years. I kind of got into the sport right when it happened and it was kind of a natural progression for me really taking my two passions, fly fishing and stand-up paddleboarding, and incorporating them too. And I could access water, I can hold and, and have shots at fish that, you know, some of the boats can't. We've started fishing off stand-ups. I know it has been done before, but the stand-ups we, we are using, you can surf at the same time. Uh, we're not necessarily standing up and casting, but I think just being in the moment, being close to the structure, you kind of take it all in. That's a monster. Yeah. A, next year's model. Next year's model. Beautiful fish. Oh, yeah. Little guy hit the flood. Flies almost his size. I think a gap this morning is probably two, three hours. I said that we were going to pick up at about 11. Looks like out of water, small craft advisory. We're kind of right on that border zone right now. 15 to 25 knots. The night before offshore fishing, it's like this wonderfully horrible nervousness and anxiety filled night. And I can't sleep. You're rolling in bed, your mind's going. And it's, I think, Offshore fishing here at saltwater angling in Southern California, that's what it is. You never know what you're gonna catch when, every time you go out. When it comes to fishing offshore, there's a lot of variations as far as reading your SST charts, your chlorophyll charts, your different currents, your current temperature breaks, green water, blue water. You're looking for turns, you're looking for anything that doesn't look normal when you're fishing offshore. Going down the slide, just the east end of Catalina, about 10 miles. Keith and I hadn't seen anything for, I don't know, two and a half hours. And Keith says to me, he says, look in the distance, I think that boat's on a paddy. So I grab my glasses and I'm looking through the glasses, I'm like, holy crap, Keith, that thing is huge. Size of the garage door. So we motor on down there, proceeded to pull up on this paddy. Wow. Hey, that's the biggest one I've seen in a while, dude. It's the biggest one I've seen this year, that's for sure. Keith looks down on the wall and says, 
Vaughn, you got to see all these dorada. Now I'm still at the helm, you know, kind of getting my bearings, checking water temperature, trying to mark the spot where this paddy is in case we've got to go back to it tomorrow. And uh, he's like, Vaughn, you get, got to get your fly in the water. And, you know, I look down and I just see the whole paddy's just lit up with, with dorado. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Kind of almost like a zen feeling that you, that you get and you feel that fish grab i mean it's there's nothing else that can describe just just the way they hit it and eat it so ferociously yeah and straight away if it's a big fish it's going to take you straight into the back end Fly fishing, I think, for me, it takes me right there on the top. I think all the hard work you've put into for tying your own flies and just tying your lead in, knowing that your knots are all perfect from from fly line end to your, to your fly, all your gear's in great order, and getting the eat, and I think landing that fish, I mean, it just makes you, to me, I think, a complete angler. If you get a big fish, you've done everything right, and there's so many things that can go wrong fishing the fly rod. A lot of the saltwater fly guys that have fished the freshwater you know, are just used to releasing the trout. And I think that has trickled down to the same concept when you fish in the ocean. You know, take what you need, take care of it. Mother Nature has, has provided you the opportunity to catch a beautiful fish. And uh, you know, if you catch another one, you know, think twice about keeping it, let it go. Some of the best things that have ever happened to me in life happened to me in the water. And I look at my young four and a half year old son and I want that same experience for him, that same growing experience, that same experience of taking care of something and fully enjoying it at the same time. And that to me is very special. And it's become more special now that I have a child. Um, as a single person, you don't, I didn't really think of those things about the legacy of the fishery, the health of the fishery until now. And it's been an incredible personal journey for, for me. I do come from a conventional background as well as fly fishing, but I think over the years, fishing the fly for me is more true. Uh, you got to seduce that fish to eat a bunch of chicken feathers. You know, I mean, other than that, it's, it's like, you know, what else is there? But I think at the end of the day, it's just, it's just about going out there, giving it all you can, and just being, you know, happy that you're doing it. Growing up in, in this ocean culture, it's, it's, it's not about catching the biggest wave. It's not about catching the biggest fish. It's about the time spent with the people that you love, your family and your friends. And I think that that has been the biggest experience of my life. And I know that the ocean would be the biggest part of that.